welcome one more day to life in harmonia i have just contemplated the sunset i love contemplating consciously it's a very healing practice because it cleans the mind the heart it's known as sun gazing and it was practiced since ancient times but we have to understand what the sun really is inside and outside consciousness and conscience is not the product of mm, chemical interactions in the brain or the brain magnetism as some scientists say consciousness which is able to perceive the mental processes the emotions sensations and conscience which is that inner voice communication which make us know what is real and what is not real what we have to do what love can transform in us derive directly from the primordial source the absolute sun within which all the galaxies rotate and in the center of every galaxy there is also a central sun which in turn feeds energetically all the suns including this sun of our solar system which is not a ball of fire floating in space according to the laws of gravity even great scientists like Eric Toller an electrical engineer came to the conclusion that the sun cannot be a ball of fire emitting light because all the data received even by scientific measurements contradict that view did you know that the sun is colder inside than in the outside why did you know the sunlight cannot be seen in the outer space it can only be seen within the atmosphere because the sun does not emit light this is an idea that I first came studying the cosmology of Mr. Gurdjieff and it was very strange to me in the beginning but now I'm surprised that he was in the right direction even when all the measurements of science were not applied because he lived in the first half of the 20th century but now we know that our senses of perception and the phenomena in the atmosphere determine most of what we consider as the light of the sun the heat and the new paradigms of science start to understand that light is not photons traveling through space but perturbations in a field of energy which is pervasive omnipresent and our mind affects that field even max planck one of the first founders of quantum mechanics said that consciousness is primary it comes before matter or what we understand as matter from consciousness come certain force fields that generate matter so consciousness is what generates this material world and since it's in us we can generate conditions from the field I'm not making this up this is even in the new views of scientists, doctors even though it's a very old ancient science I'm just pointing clues so that you can understand and investigate on your own question everything the supposedly scientific views suggest because from the scientific paradigms derive the way we perceive reality 
If we believe we are just a collection of atoms in a planet floating in a space without any meaning, we are lost. That is madness. The Earth, the Sun, the planets in general are not what science tells. The Earth is not flat either, so forget about that. There are many data which contradict that view. Our minds get flat, that is very obvious. But nothing in nature is really flat. Even the field that permeates everything is more like a sphere within which everything takes place. And within that field, space and time are an illusion. You cannot separate time from a space. A space is the result of discharging the field. When you converge energy into a point of conscience and consciousness, time and space disappear. Because they are just an illusion of perception, of mental measurements. The mind of the serpent, as it was known in ancient times. Even if you go to the Torah, the book of Genesis, chapter 3, you will see that the serpent, the being that deceived Adam and Hawa, humanity, was the most clever in the field, Ashade. The most clever, but not the most intelligent. You can be very clever, very intellectual, but scientists are also very clever, and they propose crazy theories, which are politically oriented and also economically based. Now we have to understand that what in Hebrew was known as Ashare, the field, was not the field of grass or vegetation. It was three levels or three planes, the mental plane of the universe, known as Beria, the world of creation or gestation, because we generate with our mind, the plane of astral manifestations, the stars, the planets, astral substances, and then the plane of action, where we manifest all those mental activities and emotional activities. So those three planes are the field. Now, beyond that, we have the absolute sphere of emanation at the absolute sun, we could say, which is pervasive as well, and it can somehow harmonize the three components, the three planes. So we have to go back to that emanative consciousness and conscience so we can really reshape our three planes and therefore the three planes of our environment because everything is not just physical but also astral is mental that's very important and this is the key of the famous holy name the youth Hawabhe, which read backwards is Hawaya existence existence is the manifestation of the essence. Now, in the same way we can manifest something luminous and harmonious, we can manifest destructive aspects. Because as it was said, don't take the holy name in vain. Why? Because we can manifest anything with it. And this is the key of the field. Even Dr. Hawkins, David Hawkins, said that the field which is referred to in science, is full of potential. But we can actualize that potential by means of intentions. So keep your intentions pure. Keep your thoughts pure. Because that is going to shape the reality you are going to live. This is the essence of understanding the holy name in us. We were given the possibility of becoming an expression of the holy name or the destructive name. If the name is not sanctified, then we destruct 
everything, inside and outside. Hallow be thy name, said Master Isho. That was the meaning. We have to holify the divine vibration so the divine vibration does not become destruction. I'm going to take a better angle. I'm just receiving some light from the mountains. Now notice that this intelligence of the serpent is associated with the tree of knowledge of good and bad, which is duality, alternate current, not direct current. You know, there is um, controversy between alternating current, which is mostly used in our homes, and direct current, which is more natural. It was even suggested by Nikola Tesla. But it's more difficult to measure and to quantify and to monetize direct current. Everything is emitting direct current the trees, our brains, hearts, the sun, and we can use all that energy. But we have to reharmonize our centers, relearn how to experience and how to live. This is what I wanted to communicate today. There is much to say about all this. No? I'm just suggesting ideas so you can ponder on your own. I studied this further in groups of study. I have several courses on therapeutic singing, on music therapy, holistic therapy, and we use some of these ideas to understand even the process of healing and disease, because disease is distortion in the field. Disease is being not at ease with what is. So we have to align ourselves with what is, so we can be what is, what we are, what we are meant to be, and not the distortions, the powers that be in this society want us to be. So for now, let's keep cleaning the mind, the heart and the body. I will keep speaking about this further on. But let's open ourselves fully to a different view so we can express the love without limits, life without fragmentation, without distortion, integral conscience, consciousness, and deep, blissful serenity. Mm -hmm.